I won't say it's dangerous, but it's definitely not a good thing because I believe economies should be sort of equilibrated across different issue areas, whether it's services or manufacturing, <coughs> etc. Um, so since 2000, 40,000 manufacturing plants have shut down, and um, I do, I will say this, I do think that globalization and trade policy has something to do with that. However, uh, we can, I think we can also be smarter about how we approach it and start to understand that globalization can be managed from a regional uh, perspective if thought through. But that would require all of us to be included in the discussion, and unfortunately, that has not happened in the last uh, 10 years. <coughs> Actually, I don't know that it's ever happened. To be honest. Uh, so, renewable energy creates more jobs than other sources of energy. Four times as many jobs per megawatt as installed capacity as natural gas, and 40% more jobs per dollar invested than coal. I don't like bashing on coal, even though I, I still haven't figured out the new clean technology that's supposed to be developed. So, um, but I do understand that in many regions that is the main only income source as a, or, or, or main employment source. So we've got to figure out a way to come up with some balances um, in terms of what we're doing. Uh, national security pers uh, perspective, imperative, if you will. Um, you saw the, you know, imports and the graph that Dr. Fenton put up. This kind of gives you an idea. One of the things that concerns me is that these countries, many of the countries that we buy oil from, are a little bit unstable and uh, have a tendency sometimes to engage us in diplomatic challenges that we may not otherwise care to be involved in. Too many wars, I think, have happened because of oil, and um, it seems like, uh, <laughs> well, more than most. Um, and um, <coughs> we import uh, well over half of our old oil from unstable and undemocratic nations. That's a challenge for us, because part of our foreign policy has always been to export democracy, if you will, or democratic principles. And whether or not we've been successful in that, uh, it's still a principle that this nation holds dear as, as part of our culture. So I think that's something to bear in mind. Um, we invest in alternative sources of energy. We reduce oil consumption and increase that energy independence. Uh, the numbers speak for themselves. Uh, if we could reduce having to bring in that kind of oil by using <coughs> those hydrogen cars. And by the way, I did get to drive in a hydrogen car. General Motors brought one over to us at the AFL-CIO. It is the most quiet, interesting creature. Um, it's, uh, although, and I didn't notice the little TV thing on the Prius. I think I would have crashed it if I took that. <laughs> <laughs> we actually have five fuel cell powered car running around Florida. Do you really? Yeah. Wow. Progress Energy does have uh, one. Well, one of the things they were telling us, though, about the, the nitrogen, uh, uh, was, uh, I'm sorry, was that, well, there's, there's no, uh, what do you call them? Not the, like, like gas stations. Yeah, Where do you right. go to plug right, them in, right? right? Oh. So uh, they are very few and far between it. They wanted me, they were going to give me one. And I said, oh, that's really great. And I live in D.C. So where, pray tell, do I go and fuel this thing up? About 30 miles outside of the city is some of the worst beltway traffic. I was like, you know what? I'll take the metro. <coughs> um, but it's very cool. It's a very neat, neat animal. <laughs> so from an environmental perspective, Perspective, as you well know, we've been talking about climate change and global warming, and I think for all of us, that's starting to take on a real and real meaning. Uh, let's talk about us as a population, being Latinos. We're 15% of the population, yet in 2002, more than seven out of ten of our population lived in counties that were violating federal air pollution standards for one or more pollutants. When we think about emissions, it's not just carbon emissions; it's also the co-pollutants. It's it's soot, basically. And if you notice, the, 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 and I'll get into this more in the, the, the health slide, the, the number of young Latinos with chronic uh, asthma issues has grown. And there is a correlation when you map it out between where these dirty power plants are. And